Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Spring Convocation 2023, and a special welcome to the parents, family, and friends of our graduates today. We acknowledge that we gather today on Treaty 6 territory in the traditional homeland of the Métis. We pay our respects to the First Nations and Métis ancestors of this place and reaffirm our relationship with one another. I would ask that everyone please stand as you are able for the honour song and the arrival of the Chancellor's Platform Party and our graduates.
Thank you to our drum group, the Buffalo Boys, who have been with us for many, many years of convocation. And today they were performing our graduate entry song. Please. I ask that you remain standing uh, as we join our vocalists. First, Fallon Baptiste in the singing of O Canada in English, French, and Cree. And following, Brandy Turand will sing the Métis National Anthem. Ka-ka-na-ta Ni-gin-na-ni-ta-s-ki-na-n Sa-gi-to-win Ki-cha-a-si-mi-sak Karton-pra-se-por-te-le-pi Il se porte la croix Ton histoire est une épopée Des plus brillants exploits God keep our land Glorious and free Oh Kia oche, O Canada, we stand on guard for In the forest, on the river, and across the western plain As the white man journeyed westward to the land of the Indian A new race was created, a new nation rose up strong Hardship as its destiny and its curse to not belong. In the land from which they came, in the land they helped to build, they found themselves the alien, found their vision unfulfilled. And despite their valiant effort to defend what they believed, when at last the battle ended, they were only left to grieve. We are proud to be Métis, watch our nation rise again. Never more forgotten people, we're the true Canadian. For the newest generation and the future ones to come. With the past to motivate us, it will help to keep us strong. As we build the mating nation, as we watch it rise again, our past loss is motivation to inspire our future gain. We are proud to be matey, watch our nation rise again. Never more forgotten people, we're the true Canadian. We are proud to be Métis, watch our nation rise again. Never more forgotten people, we're the true Canadian. You may be seated. Once again, welcome to everybody here today on this wonderful, wonderful day of celebration. My name is Julian Demke, and I am the University Secretary and Chief Governance Officer for the University of Saskatchewan. It is my distinct pleasure to be able to assist in emceeing these proceedings today. 
On behalf of our eminent chancellor, I have the honor of introducing to you the members of our platform party that you see before you today. I'd like to introduce them and I will begin with the front row on my left, your right, Harvey Thunderchild, Knowledge Keeper, Roland Duquette, Elder, the Honourable Gordon Wyatt, Minister of Advanced Education, Province of Saskatchewan, Peter Stoichev, President and Vice-Chancellor, Grit McCreeth, Chancellor, Sharon Jinkerson Brass, Honorary Degree Recipient, Irini, Provost and Vice-President Academic, Cheryl Hamlin, Vice-President, University Relations, Baljeet Singh, Vice-President, Research. In the second row, Russ Isinger, Interim Vice Provost, Teaching, Learning and Student Experience and University Registrar. Patty McDougall, Deputy Provost. Terry Bedard, Orator. Reggie Yemiche, Orator. Kim Fontaine, Orator. Angela Jaime, Interim Vice Provost, Indigenous Engagement. Kayla Benoit, GSA Vice President, Indigenous Engagement. Trevor Coe, Assistant Associate uh, Dean, Research and Grad Studies, Agriculture and Bioresources. Darlene Clark, Senator, University of Saskatchewan. Adam McInnes, President, of Saskatoon Métis Local 126. Brian Harvey, Representative of the University of Saskatchewan Retirees Association. Jordan Robertson, Senator from the University of Saskatchewan. Shelley Brown, Chair, Board of Governors, University of Saskatchewan. Louise Samard, Member, Board of Governors of the University of Saskatchewan. Marty Seymour, Member, Board of Governors, University of Saskatchewan. Mary Buer, Vice Provost, Faculty Relations. Fran Wally, Associate Dean, Academic, Agriculture and Bioresources. Chris Clark, Associate Dean, Academic, Western College of Veterinary Medicine. Julian Muir, Dean, Western College of Veterinary Medicine. Angela Bedard Hahn, Dean College, of Agri Dean, College of Agriculture and Bioresources. Debbie Burston, Dean, College of Graduate and Postdoctoral Studies. And behind them, and I would ask them to stand, members of the faculty of the University of Saskatchewan. Would you please join me in expressing to all these faculty, administrators, and members of our governing bodies our thanks for the work they have done by supporting, teaching, and encouraging our graduates. I'd like to now invite our President and Vice-Chancellor, Peter Stoichev, up to the podium to address the graduates. Thank you, Julian, and good afternoon, everyone. It's wonderful to see all of you here to celebrate the graduations of students from two core colleges of our great university, the College of Agriculture and Bioresources and the Western College of Veterinary Medicine who with their expertise and their excellence stand for everything that this university is all about. Eminent Chancellor, graduates and families, honored guests, I thank the many people who are here today to be part of this moment in the University of Saskatchewan's history and a convocation is a historical moment for this university. It goes down in the history books and everybody who crosses this stage is part of that history and everybody who's here today who has supported the graduates who will be crossing this stage are part of this history. I want to acknowledge in particular our convocation elder Roland Duquette and knowledge keeper Harvey Thunderchild. Elder Duquette has been on this convocation stage for countless convocation ceremonies stretching back many years. He's here in honor of and to acknowledge all of the Indigenous and non-Indigenous students who cross this stage. I ask you to acknowledge him and knowledge keeper Harvey Thunderchild as you cross the stage as well. I want to thank the Buffalo Boys drum group. That honor song that they played is for all of you. It's played at the beginning of every convocation ceremony that we've got. Adam McInnes, who's president of the Métis Nation Saskatchewan Local 126, is here as well. Thank you very much, sir, for being here and representing that very important organization that we have a strong relationship with. And the Honourable Gordon Wyant, Minister of Advanced Education, who is a graduate of this university and well knows and supports this university from his position in government, the value of post-secondary education 
in this province and far beyond. And more importantly than that, he was a grade eight student of our chancellor at Grosvenor Park Public School. <laughs> and I want to also acknowledge, and you'll be hearing from her in a few minutes, our honorary degree recipient, Sharon Jinkerson Brass, the honorary degree, as you will hear, is the highest honor that the university can bestow on anybody. It is a huge honor. We do not bestow one on somebody at every convocation, and I'm really proud that this is one of the convocation ceremonies where that will be happening. And the many faculty on the stage who are the core of this university, they've been leaders, mentors, teachers, supporters for all of you who are graduating today and I know that you owe them a lot. And I want to give a big shout out to all of the supporters of the graduates here today, the families, the friends, the high school teachers, the loved ones, because none of you, none of us, achieve anything as big as you're achieving today without a lot of help along the way. Congratulations, of course to all of the students who are here today, many of whom began their studies during the pandemic and who endured it gracefully and really resiliently, and it paid off because here you are celebrating this milestone in your lives, but it's your hard work and your perseverance that have brought us together and everybody in this space acknowledges and thanks you for that. And I want to also congratulate all of the parents who are here today. I know that when my kids crossed the stage at graduation ceremonies, it was a very moving time. It was the end of one era, the beginning of another. Many of you helped encourage, no doubt cajole, probably pay for your kids to go to university. And for those reasons, and probably many more, it's an emotional experience for you today. Satisfaction, pride, maybe a bit of relief. That was my case. <laughs> With my kids, I thought, wait a minute. Just last week, you were learning how to walk, and now you are walking across this stage. So congratulations to all of the parents who are here today as well. We're also here because this university has brought us together. A university is a wonderful thing. We can't take them for granted. Look around the world. We're lucky to have universities in this country that are flourishing as they are. They're crucial to the ongoing conversation that we call democracy. We're so fortunate to be in Canada and to have the freedoms that we have. And given the world that we're in now, the very strange world that we're in now, where it's difficult to separate out what's true and what's not true, where our future depends on knowledge and also on the correct use of it, where research, and we're a really research-intensive university, one of the top in that category in the entire country, where research holds the key to our greatest challenges, where not only free speech but informed speech are critical to our humanity. Universities are needed more than they have ever been needed and this, the University of Saskatchewan, is needed more than it has ever been. It's why we say that we govern ourselves not on the basis of what we want to be, but what the world needs us to be. And what all of you crossing this stage today, strengthened with a University of Saskatchewan degree, go on to do in your lives is going to matter immensely to our collective futures. I think of it this way, it's a great privilege to have a university education, and with that privilege comes great responsibility. There are very few people, comparatively speaking, on the face of this earth that have the opportunity to have a university education, that have the financial means, the access to it, live in a country where a university exists, that they can study at. And so we need you to go out and make the world a better place than it is right now. And if you don't do it, if you don't make the world a better place, who is going to do it? We need you to be thoughtful, educated, and humane leaders in a world that really needs strong leadership. Some of the country's most formative political leaders got their degrees here, a prime minister, a governor general, 
nine premiers, First Nations chiefs and vice chiefs, many Métis leaders, many lieutenant governors of Saskatchewan and other provinces, many Canadian ambassadors to countries around the world came from this university. We need you to become groundbreaking researchers who change how we understand our world. Many who have gone on to do that have graduated from here, and people who have wanted to do that have come here from around the world because we provided a great place to do it. Researchers from around the world have been coming to this university for decades because of our commitment to excellence, and as a result, we've become a global talent magnet. One of those was Gerhard Hertzberg, who came here in 1933 to escape Nazi Germany during the Nazi occupation. His wife was Jewish. He was a faculty member here for 10 years from 33 to 43. During that time, he did all of his formative work in spectroscopy, in physics and chemistry that led to him winning the Nobel Prize in 1971. For some of you who have been taking photographs over at, on the university campus, that plaza that you are taking photographs in with the big Peter McKinnon building as a backdrop and the flowers set up in front of the bowl, that's Nobel Plaza, partly in honor of Gerhard Hertzberg. We need you to help find cures for cancer and many other health challenges, and people at this university have done that. A little bit more history, this university is the home to the Cobalt 60 cancer therapy treatment that revolutionized cancer therapy in 1951, and it went on to save the lives of millions of cancer patients around the world. This was the place. This was the university that first created that successful Cobalt 60. There was a race to do it, but we were the ones that created the one that first successfully treated a cancer patient. Our former chancellor and Lieutenant Governor Sylvia Fedoric worked on it when she was a student here. She played a big role in the accuracy of it that meant that it was so successful. And the casing for it was made by the small Acme Machine and Electric Company just a couple of miles from here on Idlewild Drive. It's a great Saskatoon and Saskatchewan story of something that positively impacted millions of lives around the world, and I doubt if many people even know about it. That's the university that you are leaving here today with having graduated from with a diploma or a certificate or a degree from. We need you to be great athletes and coaches and graduates of this university have been among them. Curler Sandra Schmerler, wrestler Natasha Fox, NHL coaches Mike Babcock, Dave King and many other NHL coaches were here as student athletes will be hosting the National University Women's Hockey Championships in March of 2024, right here, right where you're sitting. And because of that history of excellence, we were able to build Merlis Belcher Place that we're all in gathered here today for this convocation ceremony. We need every one of you to try to help ensure peace in any way that you can. There are many roads to that great goal. Yesterday, June 6th was the 79th anniversary of D-Day, and I'm reminded of the 2,500 students, staff, and faculty who enlisted in the Second World War, 202 of whom never returned. Ensuring that democracy prevails, fragile and embattled as it can be, is another route to ensuring peace, and that too is where we need all of you in the future to fight for the most important freedoms that the invasion of Ukraine proves cannot be taken for granted, and to do this by understanding the difference between truth and its imposters. That's what a university education can do for all of us. The real and lasting victories are those of peace, they're not of war. We need you to continue to work on how to provide food to the world's rapidly growing population. And I know that I'm speaking to the right audience today when I say that. In order to meet the world's food needs, agricultural productivity needs to almost double. 
our College of Agriculture and Bioresources, and the Western College of Veterinary Medicine are playing a huge role in that. So is our Global Institute for Food Security, our Crop Development Center, which recently celebrated its 50th anniversary. The economic impact of our agriculture and veterinary research is over $40 billion accumulated over several decades, and that's due to our development of crop varieties and techniques for the reduction of summer fallow. That's why this province is a global export powerhouse. Our Global Institute for Water Security plays a big role in that as well. It's ranked number one in the entire country and at the very top of universities around the world. We need all of you to help ensure the world does not suffer from another pandemic. Science has done what was asked of it to create vaccines in about a year's time. The culmination of a lot of sacrifice and hard work and decades of basic research as well that led up to that ability. And our researchers here have played a big role in that as well. But there's a role for everyone, not only scientists, to prevent the next pandemic. If that pandemic revealed anything, it's that humanity's future depends on evidence and database truths being widely circulated and understood. High infection and mortality rates resulted from widespread misunderstanding, some misinformation, some skepticism of information, and often a rejection of verified scientific truths. That's why, that's why the degrees that you have worked so hard to earn in agriculture and bioresources, in veterinary medicine, could not be more timely and could not be more important. You have all experienced that difference between what's true and what's not true every day in the classroom, in the lab, in the performance halls, on the sports fields. This university has accepted that challenge. That's what everyone on this stage has been committed to. And we need all of you to continue to accept that challenge as you move beyond this university with your degree in hand. What you go on to do will be the difference maker for our collective futures. If ever there was a need for your expertise, it is right now, so that you can help us to lead public opinion and not to follow it. The University of Saskatchewan degree that you are receiving today has tremendous value. Many employers tell me that when they see an application from a University of Saskatchewan Ag Bio or Vet Med grad, it gets special attention. Why? Because the quality of the university is so high, because of its graduates' work ethic that's part of our prairie roots, and because you are problem solvers. And we need you tomorrow to solve problems that we can't even imagine today. I said that at a convocation over three years ago when the pandemic wasn't even a blip on the radar. We need you tomorrow to solve problems we can't even imagine today. Saskatchewan's future is gonna depend on it. The world's future is gonna depend on it. And this underscores the critical importance of investing in higher education and the fact that we are a crucial part of the province's future success. We're in a province, think about it, we're in a province with the natural resources that are second to none in this country, with almost half of Canada's field crop land, 30% of the world's potash supplies at a time when the world needs food, the highest grade uranium in the world when we need clean energy options, more than 10% of the world's rare earth minerals, vast tracts of forest, fresh water, huge strength in oil and gas, but the key is how to be innovative and sustainable and responsible with these natural resources for the benefit of all. That's Saskatchewan's great challenge, and the colleges of Ag Bio and Vet Med are playing a central role in meeting that challenge. As one of Canada's top-ranked universities, the University of Saskatchewan ensures that this province stays ahead of the innovation curve. Without our kind of research and teaching, there is little innovation, and without innovation, we all have a diminished future. We have the largest scientific infrastructure 
in this country at a university. We have an enviable strength in agriculture and bioresources and in veterinary medicine, in business. The humanities and social sciences, the fine arts, environment and sustainability, public policy, public health, medicine, law, more than that, the list goes on. We're supported by world-class researchers and students from around the world. No wonder we have reversed the talent outmigration of previous decades that saw our graduates leave this province. Today, the majority of our graduates stay here because they see a future that's prosperous and meaningful for them. So now, more than ever before, we all need people with degrees like yours, from a university like yours, to help build a more sustainable world, a more equitable world, a healthier world, for sure a more compassionate world, a world with the courage to embrace diversity and embrace togetherness at the same time. And I'm proud that we now have students from over 130 countries attending this university, and many of those countries are represented by graduates and supporters who are on this stage today. The world also needs us to be a university that responds to the work of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. And I'm grateful that the University of Saskatchewan is seen in this country as a participant, not just a bystander, in building reconciliation because we are at a time when the country faces the greatest cultural opportunity of its entire history. Being the university the world, we, world needs today means committing to reconciliation. Canada's future depends on our Indigenous youth making this world a better place in ways that they only, only they know how. It will take a strategic mixture of patience and impatience, and it's going to take time. But as Walter Murray, who was our first president, wrote to a friend while he was on the train out here to begin his work in 1908, we are building here for centuries. The University of Saskatchewan is a great experiment in human culture. It's a place where we learn to be humble servants of a democratic society and respectful critics of it. None of you know exactly where you're headed, and that's okay. You are stronger than you might think you are. Stay among those, surround yourself with those who see the greatness in you. Take the journey, take the risks, find the passion, make a positive difference to a world that needs you now. Think of what you've achieved here today. You've taken a huge step. Your hard work will pay off. It could take a month, it could take part of a lifetime, it will pay off. It's a great privilege to have a university education and with that privilege comes great responsibility. If people like you with a university degree don't make the world a better place, who's gonna do it? But the best thing that you can do for the world is make the most of yourself. Be the best version of yourself there is, not a second-rate version of somebody else. Walk out of here telling the world who you are. Thank you in advance on behalf of everybody here for taking up this tremendous and timely challenge, and I congratulate you on today's milestone in your lives. Thank you. Thank you, President Stoichev. Each convocation period, the University of Saskatchewan Senate selects a small number of special individuals to receive the highest honor our institution can bestow, an honorary degree. To introduce this ceremony's recipient, Sharon Jenkerson Brass, I'd like to call up our Provost and Vice President Academic, Arini. Thank you, Julian. Hello, everyone. Bonjour. And in the languages of the first peoples of these lands, Tanse. Tansi, Han, Ilanate, Anin. Eminent Chancellor, on behalf of the Senate, I present to you Sharon Jenkinson Brous. Would you like to rise? Thank you. Elder Jenkinson Brass is a member of the Key First Nation located on Treaty 4 territory 
south of Norquay, Saskatchewan. She is an integral member of the Piwasisquan Indigenous Wellness Research Group at the University of Saskatchewan, supporting its work as a traditional knowledge holder and elder. Piwasisquan focuses its research on Indigenous health and wellness. The teams collaborate with Indigenous communities, supporting them as they undertake their own health and wellness. I'm grateful for the learning that Piwasisquan is a Cree term that means the sky is starting to clear or the weather is improving. This reflects an opportunity to get out on the land after a storm. Elder Jinkerson Brass is currently working in collaboration with University of Saskatchewan researcher Dr. Alexandra King, co-lead of Piwasisquan with Dr. Malcolm King. In this role, she is providing support to a healthcare project involving the University of Saskatchewan, the Key First Nation, and the Yorkton Tribal Council. This project supports research on heart disease and spinal bulbar muscular atrophy, also known as Kennedy's disease. It prioritizes indigenous knowledge systems and culturally responsive health research services and programming. Elder Jenkinson Brass's life's work has focused on indigenization, decolonization, cultural revitalization, and the restoration of matriarchal teachings. She has also worked as an adoptee rights advocate. Most recently, Elder Jenkinson Brass has taken on a leadership role in indigenizing community-based health research, bringing a grounded and trauma-informed harm reduction approach. She has been described as someone who has a remarkable ability to connect with people. She has influenced numerous scholars at our university, as well as nationally and internationally. In a letter to the University of Saskatchewan Governance Committee, Elder Jenkinson Brass's honorary degree supporters described her in this way. Her passion for cultural revitalization, her community indigenous people and reconciliation are unmatched. Her commitment and dedication to her lifelong journey of cultural learning and healing has both inspired and enlightened us through her teachings. Sharon recognizes the importance of connection, culture, and land, which is why her impact has been noticeable and long-lasting. Her expertise is in high demand, and those who are privileged to work with her are humbled and grateful. Sharon meets people where they are. She opens her heart to research participants and those who work alongside her. She enriches the experience and teases out stories and data in a very gentle way. She creates and holds ethical space and actively works to minimize and reduce harm that may rise from generational, collective, or personal trauma. Her leadership and knowledge have been an asset to many projects and the relationships she creates with participants continue to this day. Elder Jenkinson Brass's relationships with her family and with her indigenous communities have informed and inspired her work, her motherhood and her grandmotherhood. She recognizes the importance of connection, culture and land. As a 60s scoop adoptee, she had to reconnect with her roots and her community in her early 20s, she reunited with her matriarchal grandmother, who became her mentor and teacher in her cultural ways. And she is also an award-winning artist who was the artist, artistic director of Big Sky, a successful multimedia company that performed in the United States and Canada. For 30 years then, Elder Jenkinson Brass has been a community leader working for social change for indigenous communities in the areas of the arts, culture, health, and community development. She says this recognition today feels like an honor, but it doesn't come easily to have the spotlight on ourselves. Elder Jenkinson Brass therefore accepts this recognition today as a form of service to her communities and for those yet to be born. Eminent Chancellor, 
I present to you Sharon Jenkinson Brass and ask that you will confer on her the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the legislature of the province and with the consent of the Senate of this university, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa and invest you with all the powers, rights, and privileges pertaining thereto. Picture. With that, I would now welcome Dr. Jacobson Brass to the podium to provide us with some remarks. Graduates, chiefs, elders, matriarchs, President Stoichev, Chancellor McCreeth. My dear friends and relatives, all my relations, I would like to acknowledge that we are meeting here on Treaty 6 territory. I am grateful to the leaders, knowledge keepers, and communities who have upheld this secret, sacred treaty that allows us to be here today. I would also like to acknowledge our Métis relations who also call this territory their home. It is an immense honor and privilege to be here with all of you beauties today. I wish to honor my chief, Clinton Key, counselors Daryl Cody, Sydney Kashane, Kimberly Kashane, Fernie Osoup, and especially my son, Solomon, Councillor Solomon Richard Reese, who are here today to represent my nation, the key First Nation. I also want to acknowledge my life partner, who is in the spirit world, Wilaha, Big Sky, Victor Reese and my sister, Georgina, who is here with us today. I especially want to say from the very bottom of my being, McWish, thank you, Dr. Malcolm and Alexandra King. They are the visionaries holding the space along with the Pewasasquan team where we grow and dream together a new vision of healthcare for our people and all peoples. Today, we are looking towards the future and appreciating our unfolding stories as peoples and nations. We are shaping a new history for future generations and I thank the University of Saskatchewan for creating the space for this work. When I was very young, I was taken from my people and like so many others, placed into foster care and later adopted. Although my adoptive parents raised me with love, I still felt this emptiness and a longing for a land I'd never walked on, voices I'd never heard, and people I'd never seen. As a 60s scoop adoptee, and in the many decades of my work, I've heard thousands of similar stories. This is part of the legacy of the 60s scoop 
experience. 27 years after I was taken, I was a stranger to myself and my people. I was so afraid to meet my family and my community. And when I received information about my birth family, I put off contacting them for many months. I still remember the deep breath I took before calling my band for the first time. I was terrified because the fear of rejection is so powerful. I didn't know it then, but my whole life was about to change. When I called home, the chief told me that he might know who I am and where I'm from. I am told that he put the phone down and ran across the field to my grandmother's house. The very next day, the phone rang, and I heard an elderly woman's voice saying, Is that you, Sharon? My grandmother got straight to the point. She wasn't one for small talk. She said, I'm going to come and see you. My heart raced at the thought of meeting a blood relative for the first time. I felt terror and curiosity as I fumbled around trying to find my calendar to select a, an agreeable date for her to visit. I'm leaving on the bus tonight at five, she announced. I stopped looking for my calendar. <laughs> Several times I re rearranged everything in my apartment while I waited for her bus to arrive. Her journey took nearly a day. The moment I embraced my grandmother, I knew everything was going to be all right because she had a natural warmth and gentleness about her. We spent the evening getting to know each other, and I found conversation flowed easily as we shared stories of our lives. The moment came for us to settle in for the night, and I politely asked my grandmother, would you prefer the couch or my bed for the night? My grandmother looked at me. She said she'd been a midwife for nearly 50 years. I brought most of your relatives into this world, and I always slept with those babies on their first night here on Mother Earth. I was emotionally spent. I'm tired, and I had no idea why she was telling me this story. I'm going to sleep with you tonight because you were born far away from your people. And that was that. When I crawled into bed, I was a little apprehensive because we were never very intimate in my adoptive family. This closeness was something I longed for my whole life. And here it was. The connection with my grandmother was so strong that it only took a few moments for me to settle in. My grandmother began to caress my face and she softly chanted in my ear, you are so wise, so smart and loving and kind and gentle. For the first time ever, I exist, I am alive and someone can see me, I weep. My grandmother had a phrase for her impromptu witnessing ceremonies. She would say, come here, I want to love you up. And this meant that she was going to praise you to the high heavens so your spirit would dance inside. My people understood the importance of seeing people for who they truly are and taking time to witness the glory of every human being. My grandmother became my teacher. 
who introduced me for the first time to who I really am. She was so kind and loving and compassionate. In the world I grew up in, these medicines were in short supply. I was raised, like many in my generation, to be competitive, obedient, and righteous. My grandmother taught me that love is the most important medicine. Class of 2023, permit me this final moment to love you all up. I am here to witness all of you for what you have achieved. All of you have worked so hard to be here today, and I acknowledge you on this journey. You are our future, and what beauty all of you will go on to create. I feel hope excitement and happiness as I stand here and look out at all of you. How special this moment is to me. I see you. I feel you. I hear you. I wish to acknowledge my loved ones here today and all of your loved ones who are here to share this precious moment. Life is a journey filled with many choices and opportunities. Never forget who you really are and where you come from. And as you leap into the future, do not be afraid. We cannot fall out of the universe. In the tapestry of our shared histories and experiences, reconciliation weaves a new thread of profound beauty, guiding us towards a future of harmony and understanding. It is a gentle force that breathes a new life for our country, allowing the past to heal and nurturing a new world for generations yet to come. I am deeply humbled and honored by this doctorate, and I accept it on behalf of my grandmother, Rebecca Brass, and all those ancestors who kept our sacred teachings for future generations. And my beloved late husband, Victor, would say, we are here to bring beauty into the world. We are here to bring beauty into the world. All my relations, ho. Thank you, Dr. Jingers and Brass, for all those lovely, lovely words. An award that uh, we present annually is to a faculty member in recognition of significant contributions to uh, knowledge or artistic creativity. I'd like to call up uh, Dr. Baljeet Singh, Vice President of Research, to present this year's Distinguished Researcher Award. Thank you very much, Julian. Uh, eminent Chancellor, you sure look regal there. Um, um, I am honored to be here uh, because we are presenting Dr. Cheryl Waldner uh, with the University of Saskatchewan's Distinguished Researcher Award. Unfortunately, Dr. Waldner could not be with us today because of some other commitments, but that will not stop us from singing praises of the work that he has done. Um, University of Saskatchewan aspires to be the university the world needs. And we make that happen through the discoveries that we make 
to create solutions for very complex problems that the world is facing. And to do that, we need a cadre of outstanding academics at the University of Saskatchewan who are engaged in that type of research and scholarly work. The University of Saskatchewan is fortunate to have outstanding researchers who are trailblazers of today and they are leaders of the future. They have this curiosity which is driven by willingness to test the boundaries and they have deep and abiding belief in the potential of humanity to create a better future. And Dr. Cheryl Waldner embodies those characteristics. Dr. Waldner's work has impacted a broad range of stakeholders from cattle producers to policymakers to whole scientific fields in which she works. Dr. Waldner is a veterinarian, she is a scientist and she's a professor. Taking a very integrative approach, she has tried to connect animal health with the human health, with the environmental health, to create a better public policy. And that is a concept which you all are familiar with, is called One Health. University of Saskatchewan has a signature area in One Health. Dr. Waldner got her veterinary and the PhD degrees while studying at Western College of Veterinary Medicine at the University of Saskatchewan, and she has taken those collaborative skills to really transcend the boundaries, to build the teams so that she can tackle some of the most complex problems. The example I will give you, looking at how we use antibiotics so that we can slow down the development of resistant bacteria and we can keep on using these drugs for a long period of time. The federal government, the provincial government, the private sector, the common citizen, they all respect the skills that Dr. Waldner has because she has an ability to break down very complex technical issues into very simple and easy to understand language so that we can create a better public policy. Dr. Waldner is a national leader. She currently holds a natural uh, science, a natural uh, NSERC and uh, beef cattle research council industry chair in One Health and Production Limiting Diseases. It's a very long name. But what does it indicate is she is respected by the public sector, the academic sector, and the private sector so that she holds the chair which is put together by these entities. Dr. Waldner has used an array of tools, uh, starting with the simple ones to most advanced phone sensors, uh, apps, uh, satellite-based data gathering, um, uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence. After she takes all the data, she is linking it to the genomics of the cattle to really create a better future for cattle health, welfare, food safety, and to advance global food security because Canada is a major contributor to the agri-food system of the world. To do all this work, you need large sums of money. Dr. Waldner, has written compelling research projects to bring in more than $36 million in funding, that is $36 million in funding, to really advance the science uh, in this area of food safety, cattle health. No wonder University of Saskatchewan is currently ranked number 10 in the country when it comes to research funding out of 97 universities. It's the work of scholars like Dr. Waldner. She has produced more than 250 research papers. That's like one paper every month over her career. Just do the math. And those papers have been cited by 7,000 times. I have worked on supervisory committees with Dr. Cheryl Waldner because we are in the same college. Her ability to mentor students is exceptional. If you ask Dr. Waldner what is her biggest achievement, accomplishment, she would say, educating veterinary students, graduate students, and postdoctoral fellows. She is an outstanding teacher at heart. Scholars like that receive many awards. There's a long list of awards that Dr. Waldner has achieved locally, nationally, and globally. I will just cite one. In Canada, we had Canadian Academy of Health Sciences. It elects certain number of people, researchers, as fellows every year. Very few veterinarians have been elected as fellow of Canadian Academy of Health Sciences. She was elected a fellow two years ago. It speaks volumes to the respect that she has across disciplines of health sciences in this country. Today, we are really honored to add the Distinguished Researcher Award to the long list of accomplishments that Dr. Waldner has made. And we are so delighted and we are so honored that she is doing 
her work at the University of Saskatchewan to make it the university the world needs. Please join me in congratulating Dr. Waldner on her achievements. Thank you, Dr. Singh. Eminent Chancellor, President and Vice Chancellor Stoichev, members of the University Senate and Board of Governors, I present to you the petition of the Council of this University that the candidates to be named, having fulfilled all the requirements of the bylaws, may, with your permission, be admitted to the degrees, diplomas, and certificates to which they are entitled. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the legislature of this province, and with the consent of the Council of this university, I consent to admit you to the degrees, diplomas, and certificates to which you are entitled, and to vest you with all the powers, rights, and privileges pertaining thereto. I would ask the graduates in the front row please rise and approach the platform. As you make your way forward, I'll let you all know how the conferring of the degrees will unfold. As you enter the stage, please stop and face the audience as your academic hood will be placed over your shoulders. Once you have been hooded, please proceed to the first podium and stop as the orator will present you by your name. Once your name has been announced, please proceed to be greeted by the President and the Chancellor. Please be sure to stop and turn to face the Chancellor as she admits you to the convocation of the University of Saskatchewan. You will continue across the platform to be greeted by the president and dean or representative of your college and to receive your parchment from them. A photo will be taken as you, uh, prior to exiting the stage and the photographer is backstage to take your photo again before you return to your seat. I'm sure you've committed all that to memory. <laughs> so with that, let's begin. Eminent Chancellor, on behalf of Faculty of the College of Agriculture and Bioresources, I present to you these scholars and I ask that you will confer on them the Prairie Horticulture Certificate. I present to you Elizabeth Montgomery Duclau. <laughs> Shanna Georgia Hale. Brendan Morrison Stevens. <laughs> Eminent Chancellor, on behalf of the Faculty of the College of Agriculture and Bioresources, I present to you these scholars and ask that you will confer on them the Kanawe Teton ASCII certificate. I present to you Jody Lenore. Merrick. It's a new audience. Bartholomew Brian Matasina. Angela Ann Mose. Denise Irene Peter. <laughs> Eminent Chancellor, on behalf of the Faculty of the College of Agriculture and Bioresources, I present to you these scholars and ask that you will confer on them the Diploma in Agribusiness. I present to you Akash Kumar Upadeye. Cody Shimansky. Morgan William Harry Woodman. Eminent Chancellor. On behalf of the Faculty of the College of Agriculture and Bioresources, I present to you these scholars and ask that you will confer on them the Diploma in Agronomy. I present to you, 
Kira Ann Marie Anderson with distinction. Derek Edgar. Rylan Geck. Maria Lillian Marshall. Annie Jill Service. Grant Michael Stevens with distinction. Juan Carlos Velasquez Silva with distinction. Eminent Chancellor. On behalf of the Faculty of the College of Agriculture and Bioresources, I present to you these scholars and ask that you will confer on them the degree of Bachelor of Science in Animal Bioscience. I present to you Tashiana Reese Antonenko. <laughs> Julie Marie Borsa, with great distinction. Summer Delaney Marie Bosch, with great distinction. <laughs> Deliza Elise Chin, with great distinction. <laughs> Zoe Claire Cloutier, with great distinction. Madison Rhea Connolly, with distinction. <laughs> Liam Kevin Engel. <laughs> Julianne Hazel DeLas Alas Flores. Emily Doreen Fiesel, with great distinction. <laughs> Ava Lynn Hamilton, with great distinction. <laughs> Phoebe Aurora Johnson, with great distinction. Sabine Kirsch, with great distinction. And Zova Ella Lungu. Delilah Arlene Jeanette McGregor, with distinction. Miles Taryn Shagney Meckleborg. <laughs> Kira Shannon Madre, with great distinction. <laughs> Tyra Bailey Myers, with distinction. Taylor Marie Peace, with distinction. Dakota Brooke Peterson, with great distinction. Cheyenne Lee Porter, with great distinction. Carly Lynn Raffi. Sierra Nicole Romanishan, 
with distinction. Cassie Rochelle Sabrin, with great distinction. Esri Michelle Scott. <laughs> Chushiyu Shen, with distinction. Emily Taylor, with distinction. Kelsey June Tebow, with distinction. T. Nuitman Trung, with great distinction. Taylor Dawn Wilson. <laughs> Eminent Chancellor, on behalf of the Faculty of the College of Agriculture and Bioresources, I present to you these scholars and ask that you will confer on them the degree of Bachelor of Science in Agribusiness. I present to you Will James Bamford, Tyson Byman, with great distinction. <laughs> Travis Child. <laughs> Joel Asher Dalside, with distinction. <laughs> Kaylee Ann Dodds, with distinction. Samantha Louisa Gabra. <laughs> Quinn Thomas Halford, with distinction. <laughs> Sana Christine Hansen. Caitlin Harrison. Thomas Bradley German, with great distinction. Troy William Joyce. McCrenna Teresa Laventer. <laughs> Carter John Lewis. Yep. Austin Lennon. Spencer Michael Makara Lindsley. <laughs> Austin Lee Lushu, with distinction. <laughs> Kiara Marie Lutz, with distinction. Allison Lynn McNulty. <laughs> Lucas Colin Manny, with distinction. <laughs> A 
Ashton Quinn Nao. Donovan Niles with distinction. Randy Kent Paulgard. Kelsey Ann Rolston with great distinction. Eric Christian Sandum with distinction. Caitlin Paige Souser with distinction. Braden James Schultz. Kristen Sherban with distinction. <laughs> Cody Spagrud with distinction. <laughs> Shane Allen Stang with distinction. Cody Lane Stomp with distinction. <laughs> Madeline Thomas with distinction. <laughs> Kia Yang with distinction. Nate Christopher Terry Zip. <laughs> Eminent Chancellor, on behalf of the Faculty of the College of Agriculture and Bioresources, I present to you these scholars and ask that you will confer on them the degree of Bachelor of Science in Renewable Resource, in Renewable Resource Management. I present to you, Alexander Elliott Acton. Matthew Alexander Hergott, with distinction. Glenn Luther. Eminent Chancellor, on behalf of the Faculty of the College of Agriculture and Bioresources, I present to you these scholars and ask that you will confer on them the degree of Bachelor of Science in Agriculture. I present to you Noah Amy with distinction. <laughs> Megan Faith Anderson with great distinction. Hey, Ba. <laughs> Alexa Kathleen Berezowski. <laughs> Willa Betch. Wyatt Bolt with great distinction. <laughs> K. 
Caitlin Beckel with great distinction. Sarah Frances Busby with great distinction. <laughs> Haley May Clark with great distinction. <laughs> Carly Selena Clark. Dylan Riley Cochrane with great distinction. <laughs> Kelly Erin Cole with distinction. <laughs> Claire Marie Crittenden. Samantha Mauricia. Morgan Davy with distinction. Jordan Nathan Dilu with great distinction. Marbury Rose Decker. <laughs> Shelby Elena DeSmith with great distinction. <laughs> Elise June Dimmel with distinction. Joshua James Duncan. <laughs> Matthew William Lawrence Edwards. <laughs> Desiree Englot with great distinction. Loris ends with great distinction. <laughs> Natasha Louise Evans. <laughs> Alisa Danielle Fur with distinction. Christina Louise France. <laughs> Brian Sebastian Freire Espin with distinction. <laughs> Bronwyn Frenzel. Katrina Garland with distinction. <laughs> Dawson Michael George. <laughs> Kaylee Murray Ann Harvey with great distinction. Brendan James Hegestad. <laughs> Sydney Taylor Hicks. <laughs> Ray, 
Rebecca Hart with distinction. Trinity Mari House. Moses Odunayo Idowu. London Cody Thomas German. Kirsten Kathleen Jensen with distinction. Megan Johnson with great distinction. Kendall Junek with great distinction. Parker John Brock Keir with great distinction. Payton Sheila Keckness with distinction. Chase Barry Cousin. Tegan May Kunz. Spencer Daniel Kucha with distinction. Chelsea Elizabeth Lawrence with distinction. Claire Nicole Ledenham with great distinction. Spencer Roy Lett with great distinction. <laughs> Levi Jonathan Lando with great distinction. <laughs> Brendan Kelly Matson. Gitanjali Majoka with distinction. Hunter Madison McLear. Lian Jing Gara McDowell with distinction. Jaden Lee McKenzie. <laughs> Riley William McWalter with distinction. <laughs> Haley Marie Messia. Mason Mindyuk with great distinction. <laughs> Lauren Don Mitchell with distinction. <laughs> Lee James Morgan Pfeiffer. Farin Alberta Moss with distinction. Yeah. 
Madison Ann Musica. Min Tron Tu Nguyen, with great distinction. <laughs> Abby Elena Olsen, with distinction. <laughs> Ethan Brendan Osterhold. Mackenzie Dawn Paget, <laughs> Alexis Katrina Palmer, <laughs> Brooklyn Jade Paulo, Sarah Peterson. <laughs> Tyler C. Peterson with distinction. <laughs> Nathan William John Pumadley with great distinction. Rebecca Popovich. <laughs> Abigail Jane Pufold, with great distinction. <laughs> Alexa Jo Ridgewell. Morgan Reese. <laughs> Taryn Ripplinger with distinction. <laughs> John William Robertson with great distinction. Matthew Robertson, with great distinction. <laughs> Riley William Root, with great distinction. <laughs> Brooklyn Sampson, with great distinction. Shelby Shepherd, <laughs> Emma Justine Scottheim, <laughs> Brock Ghana Sloboshan. Kabri Anna Tanchak with distinction. <laughs> Amber Thompson. <laughs> Brooke.
Brooke Ann Tindall. Alfonso Herman Tinoco Kinde with distinction. Sarah T. Catch with great distinction. Victoria Todeschak with great distinction. Savannah Toma. Matthew John Trefiak with great distinction. Sarah Ann Tremblay with distinction. <laughs> Hannah Turner with great distinction. <laughs> Brooklyn Urich with distinction. Aaron Van Stekelberg. Aaron Van Stekelberg. <laughs> Michaela Waldbauer with distinction. Benjamin White with great distinction. Shauna Williams with distinction. Dustin Lawrence Williman with great distinction. Olivia Ann Yurok with great distinction. <laughs> Andrew Zudenek. <laughs> Chow Jo. Eminent Chancellor, on behalf of the Faculty of the College of Graduate and Postdoctoral Studies, I present to you these scholars from the College of Agriculture and Bioresources and ask that you will confer on them the postgraduate diploma. I present to you Srika Kasalingam. <laughs> Hajat Kuru. Karambil Kuru. Karambil Kuru. Kashika Seti. <laughs> Su 
Ruby Takia. Eminent Chancellor, on behalf of the faculty of the College of Graduate and Postdoctoral Studies, I present to you these scholars from the College of Agriculture and Bioresources and ask that you will confer on them the degree of Master of Science. I present to you Bobby Lee Balicki. Liam John Sanford Bolt. <laughs> Mackenzie Marie Ladoon. <laughs> Sal Sabil Islam. Friel La Suède. Antonia Jamila Powell. Michelle Lynn Ross. Joy Serene. Akshaya Thorora Loya. Sunda Sarah Francis von Steenbergen Jin Song Shu Ning Xing Zhou. <laughs> Eminent Chancellor, on behalf of the faculty of the Western College of Veterinary Medicine, I present to you these scholars and ask that you will confer on them the degree of Doctor of Veterinary Medicine. I present to you Breeze Amika Agar. <laughs> Biliana Michelle Anderson. <laughs> Madison Ellen Ado. Caitlin Berry. <laughs> Catherine Ann Beaupre. <laughs> Asada Benham Shab Shabahang. Haley Colleen Bowling, with distinction. <laughs> Jessica Aaron Boyer.
Kelsey Christine Brandt, with distinction. <laughs> Bo Allen Bridgman. Lauren Mary Broda, with distinction. <laughs> Courtney Ann Cameron, with great distinction. <laughs> Amber Carson. Amanda Marie Charpentier, with distinction. <laughs> Vanessa Elizabeth Cohen. <laughs> Andrew Crooks. Jessica Aaron De Bruyne. <laughs> Alexa Nicole Dixon. <laughs> Ellie Laurel Beatrice Duncan, with distinction. Michelle Grace Edwards. <laughs> Emmeline Algersma with great distinction. <laughs> Kieran Emily Fong. Savannah Fuller. <laughs> Kaylin Danielle Ginther, with distinction. <laughs> Savannah Ariel Goldstein, with distinction. Lucas Alexander Grist. <laughs> Jesse Caroline Hellquist. Cameron Alexander Hillis. <laughs> Vanessa Joy Chute Isben. <laughs> Jessica Marie Jackson. Tegan Daniel Ray Jarrett. <laughs> Clarissa Jimenez.
Megan Ellen Johnston. <laughs> Sophie Jones. <laughs> Eveline Lynn Juice. Morgan Francis Kelly. <laughs> Jack Edward Charles Crone. Shelby Lynn Cronus, with distinction. <laughs> Kelly Quinn Lacavi. <laughs> Dana Lynn Lieb. Tiffany Lynn. <laughs> Cheryl Lennox Sita. <laughs> Caitlin Dina Lino, with distinction. Logan Greg Linnell. <laughs> Carly Leanne Lodge. <laughs> Madeline Elise Lung. Zelma, with distinction. <laughs> Erica Elizabeth Marie McDonald, with distinction. <laughs> Caitlin Elizabeth McEwen, with distinction. Kendra Bay McGugan. <laughs> Courtney Elizabeth McNeely, with distinction. <laughs> Ashley Helen Milne, with distinction. Fiona Moser. <laughs> Mira Leanne Munn Patterson. <laughs> Angela Christine Murray. Stephen Adam Novakowski. <laughs> Lynn, 
Leanne Price. Jaskaran Singh Purba. <laughs> Tegan Celeste Remillard. <laughs> Melanie Rulin. Sheraton Norma Aline Smith. Grace Veronica Schneider. Daniela Beatrice Solis with distinction. <laughs> Hannah Gillian Sorensen, with distinction. <laughs> Carling Stewart, with distinction. Michelle Elizabeth Streeter. Kendra Alexandria Tector Todd. Alicia Kathleen Triff. <laughs> Jessica Lauren Ursu. <laughs> Alyssa Lynn Vickers. Rebecca Marie Walder. <laughs> Coral Virginia Nargella Williams. Janice Yuk Ching Wong. <laughs> Caitlin Francine Werther, with distinction. <laughs> Charlene Joan Wyatt Swain. Tori Mabel Eileen Yant. <laughs> Angela Yu, with great distinction. <laughs> Sierra Brianne Zarn.
At this time, I would like to call Dean of the Western College of Veterinary Medicine, Julian Muir, to the other podium for the presentation of a posthumous degree in the Doctor of Veterinary Medicine. Ms. V. Balzer's enthusiasm for learning and helping others was exemplified during her time as a DVM student at the Western College of Veterinary Medicine. Ms. V. is described by her peers as a bright light. Her genuine and caring actions spread positivity and joy to each person she encountered. Ms. V. valued the many friendships she made with classmates and greeted everyone with a welcoming smile. In the classroom, she was fascinated with all aspects of veterinary medicine. Her passion for learning was second only to helping others, finding great joy in seeing their success. Many of us at the Western College of Veterinary Medicine knew Thisbe, including myself. I had the privilege of teaching her, along with her classmates, in the first year of the Doctor of Veterinary Medicine program. Thisbe was truly a joy to have in class. She was a positive, compassionate person, smart, funny, and so caring for her fellow students. All of those who knew her will not forget her. Her presence is sorely missed, but Thisbe would be so happy and so proud of her classmates on graduation day. I'd like to welcome up her family to accept her degree on her behalf. Eminent Chancellor, on behalf of the faculty of the College of Graduate and Postdoctoral Studies, I present to you these scholars from the Western College of Veterinary Medicine and ask that you will confer on them the degree of Master of Science. I present to you Susari Hashika Malala Igrul Bandarela Gay. Daniel Ricardo Merchant Cantor. <laughs> Jocelyn Kate Thresher. It is customary at the University of Saskatchewan that after being admitted to their degree, 
our PhD graduates will be met by their supervisor and escorted to join the platform party in a symbolic welcome to a global community of scholars. Eminent Chancellor, on behalf of the faculty of the College of Graduate and Postdoctoral Studies, I present to you these scholars and ask that you will confer on them the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. I present to you Stanley Kwame Adoba. <laughs> Pashupati Bondari. Adam Carter. Kylie Drever. Suday Farzada Far. Ashabur Sadiqi Godebo. <laughs> Temitope Ubedat Kolapo. E.K. Ren. <laughs> Ran Kote Wellawa. Please join me in congratulating these graduates on their certificates, diplomas, and degrees. diplomas and certificates in absentia to those students who have met the requirements to graduate but were not able to be present today. At the request of the faculties, I authorize these degrees, diplomas and certificates to be granted. Now to present the Saskatchewan Institute of Agrologists Gold Medal Award, I'd like to invite Dean of Agriculture and Bioresources, Angela bedard Hahn to the podium. All right. Well, everyone, uh, it's my pleasure to announce the 2023 Saskatchewan Institute of Agrologists Gold Medal for the most outstanding graduate from a degree program in the College of Agriculture and Bioresources. The Gold Medal Prize began in 1959 when the Saskatchewan Institute of Agrologists committed to recognizing exceptional performance by a degree student in ag bio and to promote and sustain the profession of agrology. Over the years, both the profession and the value of the prize have grown significantly. This year's recipient of the SIA Gold Medal is Kira Mudry, who is graduating with a Bachelor of Science in Animal Bioscience. Kira, will you join me on the stage? All right. This is the part where I get to talk about her and make her sort of squirm and say all the nice things. Okay, so with uh, graduating with great distinction, with a cumulative program average of 94.5% today. Nice, way to go, Kira. <laughs> the 
Originally from Saskatoon, Kira is truly an outstanding student with a remarkable commitment to academic achievement, research, community, volunteering, and extracurriculars. Kira has served as a note taker for several university classes on behalf of Access and Equity Services, providing supports to fellow students who have difficulty taking notes. She is a proud member of Métis Nation Saskatchewan and has strong ties to the community of Batoche, including working as a bilingual interpreter at the Batoche National Historic Site for two summers. Yeah, go ahead, you can clap, yeah. Now, Kira's love of animals is evident not just in the degree she chose, but also in her volunteer extracurricular and research endeavors. Kira has volunteered with Living Sky Wildlife Rehabilitation and with a local veterinary clinic. She was also the internal vice president of the Animal Bioscience Club and a member of the Pre-Vet Club. After traveling to Churchill, Manitoba for our Ag Bio course on field studies in Arctic ecosystems, she was inspired to write her undergraduate thesis on ecology and management of barren ground grizzly bears in northern Canada. Her research thesis is now being read by members of ArcticNet, which is a network of centers of excellence in Canada that studies the impacts of climate and socioeconomic change in the Canadian North. Kira is currently conducting research with Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada, looking at integrated genomic tools for bison conservation. Her future plans are to pursue a graduate degree in veterinary microbiology, and ultimately to work as a researcher in wildlife conservation, ideally with Parks Canada. Kira, the future is bright with you in it, and we know this is not the last we will hear of your accomplishments. Congratulations. To present the Western College of Veterinary Medicine Faculty Gold Medal, I'd invite Dean of Western College of Veterinary Medicine, Julian Muir, to the podium. Eminent Chancellor, I am pleased to introduce our 2023 Veterinary Medicine Gold Medalist, Dr. Courtney Cameron. Courtney, can you join us on the stage? The Western College of Veterinary Medicine Faculty Gold Medal is the highest honor for Doctor of Veterinary Medical students at the WCVM. WCVM faculty members award this medal to the graduating student who has shown the highest proficiency in the science and art of veterinary medicine during the four-year program. Courtney was raised in Victoria on beautiful Vancouver Island where she grew up sailing the Gulf Islands with her family. She received a Bachelor of Science majoring in Neurobiology at the University of Victoria before her acceptance into the Western College of Veterinary Medicine. Courtney has always been a passionate member of the equine community and spends her free time riding and training horses. She's returning to Vancouver, Vancouver Island to work as a small animal practitioner, but is considering incorporating equine medicine into her practice once she's spent enough time with dogs and cats. Courtney graduates from the Western College of Veterinary Medicine with great distinction. On behalf of the Western College of Veterinary Medicine faculty, I am honored to present our gold medalist, Dr. Courtney Cameron. I'd like to now invite our Vice President, University Relations, Cheryl Hamlin, to the podium to introduce a video message from our alumni. Thank you, Julian, and good afternoon, graduates. I am truly honored to be here today amongst you. And as a proud University of Saskatchewan alumna, it is my honor on behalf of the University of Saskatchewan to welcome you into the alumni family. Congratulations on your accomplishments today. As you hold the parchment in your hands that you have received today, 
<clears throat> I hope it is a reminder of all of your hard work and a testament to everything that you have done and to all the people that have helped get you on or bring you on the journey today. You are joining a very distinguished group of over 170,000 alumni worldwide that represent alumni in 130 different countries. I couldn't be more excited to see how you will use your degree to further your career and your life. And I can't wait to see how you will be what the world needs. Please enjoy this brief video we have prepared to welcome you as part of the University of Saskatchewan alumni chapter. Last, but definitely not least, I'd like to invite our eminent chancellor to provide her concluding remarks on the proceedings today. I'm ready. This brings our convocation to a close. Dr. Jinkerson Brass, congratulations. We are honored with your presence here today. Your words will be in my heart and in all our hearts for a very, very long time. Please join me in one more round of applause for Dr. Jinkerson Brass. I have a number of thank yous. Um, our vocalists, Fallon Baptiste and Brandy Turand, our wonderful drum group, the Buffalo Boys, performing for us today. Our elders and knowledge keepers, thank you once again for joining us. In addition, the members of the Convocation Planning Team and Governance Office for their dedication to making these ceremonies a success. Finally now, to the graduates. You have studied diligently to earn your degree, diploma, or certificate, and I wish you continued success throughout your lives, both personally and professionally. Congratulations. It is my hope that thanks to your precious experience here, your education has prepared you to meet some important challenges. How to heal and nurture the human spirit, how to be creative and help transform people's lives, 
how to protect human rights, how to write a poem that explains the feeling of loss or joy, how to engineer shelter for humanity in pursuit of the common good, how to deploy capital to produce and market innovation and create opportunity for others, how to ensure that agriculture production feeds the world, or, in summary, how to design and work for a just society. Earning your parchment is a new road to opportunity and adventure. The education you have received from this university has prepared you to meet these challenges. The world needs you. Follow your heart. Be ambitious. Be kind. This will lead you to your true passion. That is our wish for each graduate of the University of Saskatchewan. Never, ever forget this institution. Your degree is a coveted passport. May all your dreams come true. And as Dr. Seuss would say, yay you. In closing, I ask that you remain at your seats until the platform party has left the stage. Enjoy the rest of the day as you continue to celebrate.